and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. I'm Steve Leahy. I've done uh, Tech Tuesday on the magnets that I use before. It was a while ago, maybe just over a year ago, about the magnetized workstation. Um, I do get a lot of questions and uh, comments about the magnets, though, specifically. So I thought I'd do a Tech Tuesday on that, uh, just kind of show what I've used. Um, kind of what I've settled on. There are so many available. Um, it'll make your head spin. So I've kind of been purchasing them here and there in different sizes and shapes to try to figure out what works best for me. And uh, hopefully uh, that'll help you a little bit in narrowing your search down. We'll talk a little bit about the neodymium magnets that I used to and why I've kind of settled on that style of magnets. So if that's something that's interesting to you, hang on and uh, we'll get right to it. Okay, so as I mentioned in the opener, um, I've kind of settled on neodymium magnets. Um, they are so much stronger than regular ceramic magnets, uh, usually about 10 times stronger. Uh, so these, these, these magnets have just worked really, really well. Before I get too far into it, I just want to make a note that the um, Vision Air setup that I have here that I paint on has a steel uh, work surface and that allows obviously all these magnets to work. On my other workstation, my old Hamilton drafting table, I actually have a big piece of a three by five sheet of galvanized steel on that as well. So I've been using magnets for a long time because they work so well for me. So that's the one thing. You know, obviously you want something that the, the magnets will stick to and uh, that's an important part. Okay, so neodymium. The, the neodymium magnets are basically another word for them, and they're in the rare earth magnet family. Uh, they call them neodymium magnets. Uh, there are actually three parts to these magnets. There's neodymium, iron, and boron. And those are the three elements that make these magnets up. And what it creates is this very, very strong, strong magnet. Uh, like I said, usually about 10 times stronger than, than its uh, comparative ceramic magnet. Uh, what's great because you can get them really small and they'll really hold on tight and that's that's great for when using stencils For instance, you can put a magnet in a really tight area and really hold that down Where a smaller magnet of the other type would wouldn't really be able to do the same job Neodymium magnets come in <clears throat> uh, Basically four different strengths for for general purpose uh, and they're they have numbers associated with them. So just remember that the higher the number, the stronger the magnet. So if you're using them for stencils like I do, um, save yourself the aggravation and just get the strongest ones you can. The four different uh, grades are N40, N42, N45, and N52. So 52, like this guy right here, is the strongest one that, that you can pretty much get commercially. Uh, they, they are just, they're, they're just great. They're super strong. Um, you'll also notice that all these are kind of shiny. Oh, it's so hard to get this off the steel. <laughs> uh, they're shiny silver. So that's a nickel coating that comes on all these magnets, and that's on there for two reasons. The first reason is that neodymium, iron, boron kind of kind of mix that com they come up with these magnets is fairly fragile. Um, they're they're um, they, they tend to break easy, so you'll, you'll definitely notice that if you have two strong ones that snap together very hard or you drop one of these bigger ones on the floor, like on a hard concrete floor, there's a good chance that they'll, they'll, they'll break apart. They'll just break. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why they put this nickel coating on them to kind of help with that. The second reason they nickel coat them is because one of the uh, ingredients to make these magnets is iron. And if you don't have this nickel coating on them, they, they, te ooh, they tend to rust. So that's you'll always find them that way. And it's an easy way to differentiate the ceramic magnets from the neodymium magnets. Uh, neodymium magnets will always have this, this coating on them. Sometimes they're black, like this one, or smoke colored, but they'll always have some sort of coating on them. Again, nickel is usually the way that, that, that most, uh, most manufacturers go. I'm going to put a link to uh, the magnets that I use and where I get them from. I get all my magnets from amazingmagnets.com. I just found this company. They are fantastic in that they literally have everything that you could possibly want. And if they don't have what you want, they will also make what you want if you have that kind of budget. So that's pretty, pretty cool. These magnets do not alter well. So say you wanted this magnet, but you wanted a hole in it. So you get out your drill and you start drilling this. Chances are, it's, first of all, it's gonna break because it's so brittle. But even if it doesn't, if you heat this up, that's the one thing that neodymium magnets don't like. 
uh, they tend to not hold up well to high, high heat. Uh, some are made to, but uh, the ones you can get commercially usually don't hold up to high heat. So you'll actually demagnetize it. It's one of the only ways you can demagnetize these magnets. So keep that in mind. Again, with um, Amazing Magnets, a company like that, they sell this one with a hole in it. So you don't even have to worry about it. They sell them in every size and shape. All right. So I'll kind of give you a quick rundown of how I came to what I, what I use now uh, and why some of these work better than others for what I do. So for holding down really, really small bits of, of the ma uh, a mask or a stencil, I thought using these small ones would be a great idea. These are, this one's a little pole magnet, and these are both neodymium as well. So what just happened there is one of the big reasons why these magnets, just really, really tiny ones, don't really work for me. Because whenever you get a stronger magnet anywhere near it, it wants to, well, this case wants to repel, but it'll then just snap over. So you can't have any, any of them really close together. So that's a problem. So what I eventually kind of came up with, this happens with the tall ones too. So this is a nice tall one. This you can get fairly close, but eventually it'll just snap over. So what I found, even though the tall ones are great because you can grab them and they're, they're great by themselves, um, what I found is these these disc shaped ones are really the ones that that do most of the heavy lifting for me. And there are two sizes that I found pretty much cover everything. There's a three eighths of an inch disc by one eighth inch thick, and I'll put links to both of these two. Uh, the other one is a quarter of an inch by an eighth of an inch thick, and those two are the ones that that I really like a lot. And these are both N52s, so these are the strongest ones you can get. Uh, and the only disadvantage that I found to these, when they're flat and you know disc-like or really close to the surface, they're really difficult to get off the surface. You have to kind of dig your fingernail underneath and then pry them up. So what I did was I grabbed just a uh, flat-headed, um, these are brass screws, but you can use really anything, but a flat-headed screw with a really short uh, barrel on it, and uh, I just use two-part epoxy and just epoxy that screw right onto the end. And that gives me a neat little handle that I can just kind of grip and, and pick up. The threads really act as a good grip too, so uh, that works really well. And I did that with the smaller one as well. I just got uh, quarter-inch headed uh, screws for that one. Now the advantage with the disc ones, they hold on so tight to the surface that they're stronger than the, usually the magnetic um, attraction that, that they would normally have side to side. So these two magnets here, I can get them almost, well, let's see how close I can get them. So you can get them really, really close before they become attracted to one another. So that's still, that's they're right on top of one another now. A little bit closer and it'll probably snap over. There we go. So now the, so you can really get these close together and use them, you know, uh, to really hold things down very, very well. And then that's kind of why I came up with, with the two. These are used for bigger areas and these are used to kind of get in tight with a smaller, you know, smaller area too. I still use a really, really tiny ones, but again, they have to be all on their own. They have to be far away from everything to really work well. If they get anywhere near a bigger magnet, they'll just snap to it. So there you go. I bought these two. These are you know, this is a lot stronger, but it's also, these are actually two magnets put together. I taped them together. And these I use for jumbo stuff. Like if I really have to hold something down, this is extremely strong. Uh, but again, you you know, it's, it is what it is. You just kind of got to find it, find the space for it, find where it works best. These big, big ones like this one, this is one inch by one inch or well, probably a little bit smaller than one inch, maybe seven eighths. In any event, these, the, this guy here is gigantic gigantically strong. So what I use something like this for is when I'm using a stencil on like ampersand board that's an eighth, eighth of an inch thick wood, this will go right through the wood down to the steel and hold on really well. Even though these are N52s, these don't really hold on. I mean, they will kind of go through the board, but not like direct to steel. They're, these things are really strong right on the steel. They'll hold a paper stencil down like nobody's business. But this is the only one that can really do the same thing on an eighth inch uh, um, stencil. You really need something heavy duty to hold through a board like that. All right. So again, I'll post links to these guys here. Uh, and that way you can kind of, you know, have a starting point. But again, mess around with it. There's so many different kinds and styles and shapes and just about everything you can think of. Um, 
As far as north and south, so these disc magnets have a north on them and a south. Um, for, for what I use them for, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the handle on, on the same, you know, the same side in each one. The only difference between is they will either stick together or they will repel each other. So that if you have them swapped, they'll repel. Uh, but they're always north and south, you know, um, through the magnet. So one, this side is north and the bottom is south. So, uh, and that's important because some of the, you know, the tall ones will, you know, will be a little bit different. Sometimes they can be, you know, north on the top and south on the bottom. Sometimes they split the magnets, so they're actually designed to stick like this. So you just got to kind of keep an eye on that, too. Uh, the other quick note is these magnets, they generally have you buy them in quantity. Uh, both of these I buy 25 at a time, which is fine because I lose them and they break and that kind of stuff. So I don't mind that. But just keep that in mind if you're trying to find the perfect magnet and you're testing them out. Um, 25 magnets um, are a lot of magnets, so uh, keep that in mind as well. Some even come only in quantities of 50, the smaller ones. They are more expensive than ceramic magnets, but when you're buying the small ones, they're not very expensive at all, so uh, it won't break the bank at all. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the magnet story. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. If you have any comments, also drop them in the comments, so that makes it easy. All righty, if you enjoyed it, Hit that like and subscribe and click that bell icon for more Tech Tuesdays and open studios and live feeds. And uh, for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, I will catch you all on the next one. Thanks a lot.